when we were yet sinners. Mm -hmm. there, were time, there was a time in our life that we were wicked and that we didn't know God and we were strangers from him. Yet when we become born again, does his hate turn to love? And that's just a posed, a posed question. Okay. That was Jeremiah 31 mm -hmm. says, God has loved us with an everlasting love right. and therefore with loving kindness he's drawn us the effectual call, irresistible grace <laughs> flowing out of election. And those whom God saves, he eternally loves. We were under his wrath, but he loved us before the foundation of the world in Christ, Ephesians 1 verse 4. So it's not that hatred turns to love, but the problem with the Arminian situation is that God loves everybody with this infinite powerful love that can't save them. And then it does a complete about turn and the unchangeable God changes and his love becomes hatred. <laughs> Ridiculous. We, well, just we never got to talk about per per perseverance. But just two quick emails okay. here. All right. This one is from Andy. He says, hello, brothers. Good friendly, de friendly debate tonight, clearly showing that brethren can dwell together even with their differences. The point I would like to add, I was in a Pentecostal church and held to an Armenian view of salvation until the doctrine of grace were explained to me. The question as the whole world, the question as the whole world, Christ died. However, in Matthew 1 21, it explains the meaning of the word world when it says, you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Again, in Ephesians 5 25, Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Shalom. And another en interest, encouraging one here, is that although I don't agree with all of the Calvinist view, I wish to say that I do love your passion Thank and you. zeal for the word of God. I yes. class you as a brother in Christ. We can agree to disagree and still be brothers and sisters. God bless you all. <laughs> Love, <laughs> Mandy. God bless you. We've got Nathan from Scotland. Good evening, Nathan. Good evening, brother. Yes, sir. A quick point. Um, I don't believe that the, you can prove biblically or theologically that the gifts of the Spirit have actually ceased. But I don't further believe also that the evidence of speaking in tongues and spirit baptism uh, are, are one and the same thing. It says in 1 Corinthians 13 that all believers are baptized by one spirit into the body of Christ. Yeah. We're sealed by the spirit, all believers receive a baptism of the spirit and are baptized by the spirit into the body of Christ. Yeah. So I have a, I have a problem uh, with the views being pro propagated about the Pentecostal views on the, the show tonight because it's heretical to say that all Pentecostals, the evidence is the speaking of tongues because it's not. But I have to take issue with my brother Angus tonight. Uh, he has done a good job of exposing a lot of the weaknesses in uh, Pentecostal theology um, because a lot of it, quite, quite frankly, is blatantly heretical. What I would say to him, though, is he's, he gets his, a lot of his doctrines and teachings from the Reformation and from the Protestant reformers such as Martin Luther and uh, John Calvin. Uh, Martin Luther himself was an anti-Semite uh, who believed that Jews should be converted at knife point or die. John Calvin can largely be credited with the system of covenant theology as found in his writings in the Institute. The mistake that people make that are in Protestant Reformed theology, they get their, they would get their views from the Protestant Reformers instead of going back to the Jewish yeah. apostles who are the real, uh, the real fathers of the faith. And the problem that we've got is there is no basis from the scriptures that you can actually prove that the gifts of the Spirit cease. When we use that term, when that which is perfect has come, it's more accurately rendered as a neuter, and it means when the body is complete, the gifts will cease. The further point is uh, Reformed theology can lead to a view of replacement theology, and that's why the bulk of people who are covenant theologians and who take their views from Luther and from Calvin are, uh, are, are anti-Semitic and believe that the, the, the promises to the Jewish people are transferred to the church, which is absolutely heretical. There's no biblical basis for that. And just quite quickly... Um, the, 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 Whoa! I think we lost okay. him there. You know, you know what? What I, what I, to, I personally, I'm very uncomfortable with this idea of Calvinism, Arminianism, and whatsoever. I just believe, as Christians, mm. we should ignore and forget these past guys who came and went with their own ideas. We should today be like Berians and go straight in the Bible by the help of the Spirit to understand it for ourselves. And that way it, makes, it, it becomes relevant and useful today. Mm. But if we keep holding on to the, 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 the old guys who are somehow, some of them are somehow li limited in oh. their understanding of the Word of God, then we're going to have a lot of problems. The same problem we have this with the guys who are the, the Braham, Braham, Braham Manians or Brahamism. They too, they held on to teachings of one man and really 
to now dig into the Bible becomes hard for them because somebody has taught this, they believed in him as a leader, then that should be the way. So I just believe somehow as Christians, we should shift away from all these ideas, Arminianism, Calvinism, let's go check what the Word of God says based on our own experiences today and be able to press forward. I think we've got uh, Jerry from Bristol. Good evening, Jerry. Hi there. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd just like to um, ask the guest, um, do they agree with Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 that um, Christ will be victorious in, in conquering death? And yes. All, all forms of death? Yes. Yes. Yes? Yes. But, but surely this, cause, this causes a problem with the lake of fire. Because the lake of fire is actually called the second death yeah. in Revelation 20. Yeah. Okay? So surely if, 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 as Paul says, the death is going to be abolished completely, okay, and the lake of fire is normally understood to be uh, eternal hell, mm. then somewhere along the line, the second death has to end. Somewhere along the line, the second death has to end. Otherwise, death will last forever. Do you understand my meaning? Yeah. Um, so, if Christ is going to be victorious, then ultimately he does have to save everybody. Yeah. In the end. That's right. Not necessarily now or in the age to come, but ultimately at some point in the distant future. Amen. He does have to save everybody. Yes, sir. For the Thank second death to be completely done away with, and the only way that can happen is that everyone is given life. Thank you, sir. And, and God bless you. I uh, would like to speak to that because I to totally repudiate that. That is the heresy of universalism, that everyone will be saved, and that is totally opposed to okay. the whole of the Christian religion. Yes. A quick email here. 1 Corinthians 15 is dealing with... A quick email here before so you read this First Corinthians bit. It says, uh, this is from Katrina. It says, hi all, I've just joined the program. I have to say I don't have a clue about the theories, <laughs> about the theories that you are discussing. I read, I read and trust my Bible, pray and try to live a Christian life, praising and thanking God. Who gives the monkeys about our simple human theories? No offense intended to anyone. God bless you all. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to quote. Oh, well, no, I was just saying in reference to the l okay. last brother. I think yeah. 1 Corinthians 15 uh, is, a, is Paul's discourse and okay. encouragement about natural death and right. how it relates to the saints. Yeah. Okay. Could I respond to one of the <laughs> ladies, uh, one of the people who phoned in? Uh, Luther, yeah. Luther was dead wrong in the Jews. He was that was terrible what he said, and we repudiate that, and we do not hold with Luther just because he's Luther, or with Calvin because he's Calvin. We hold with Scripture, and I hope the people who've been watching here have been able to see that we're giving you Scripture <laughs> chapter and verse. We have some Amen. interesting emails <laughs> coming through. This another one here from a gentleman called George. It says, hear me, both of your guests are incorrect in many, many areas of their <laughs> theology. <laughs> Please note a few of the areas. Listen, this, this discussion is going to run and run. <laughs> it says, Please note a few of the areas contrary to the original scriptures. Number one, God is sovereign. Two, God created evil. Three, God created the darkness. Four, no one can do good unless God, the Father, lives in them by his own Holy Spirit. Jesus, in five, it says, Jesus said that the words that I speak are not mine, but my Father's who doeth the works. Six, Jesus is the Savior of the world, some in this age of grace, the rest after the resurrection of the wicked. Okay. Seven, Jesus' only commission, only, Jesus's only commission was to save the world. His, his, his love and love never fails. Eight, every knee shall bow to Jesus Christ willingly, some in this age, the rest after the resurrection of the wicked. Nine, people do not go to heaven or hell when they die. They sleep, that is, have no consciousness until they are resurrected, resurrected in the first or second resurrection. <laughs> Thank you, Brother George. Mm. Patrick from East Ham. <laughs> Hello, Patrick. Hello, good evening. Good evening, good sir. Good evening. Yes. Evening. Yeah, I just wanted to, um, to say we have a very interesting um, discussion. Uh, it's, it's a topic that's quite close to my heart. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to... Um, to agree with a lot of the stuff that Angus was 